Mr. Pinchetti, a pleasure to meet you. I'm Sherlock Holmes. I'm helping Constable Oswald. I've already told him everything I know. I'm only a witness, sir. Everything's in my report. And I've read it. You forgot to mention that you hold the keys to the room where Fabio was found. I need only to find if the crime was intentional. But I need to return to my duties. I doubt the house will fall without you, Mr. Pinchetti. Just be still for a few seconds. You are the major domo of a rich mansion, and you seem barely able to afford decent clothing. You hide, under heavy makeup, a skin disease that might be treated with more onerous but less harmful means. Do you have money troubles? I do not have a lot of means. The pay is below what you might expect. But you could easily change your job if your employer does not meet your elementary needs. One can change his employer, that is true. And the blood on your shoe, where does that come from? I don't actually know. Perhaps from a guest? Did you know Fabio? Uh, not personally. He was a frequent guest, and cleaning the mess after his performances was tedious. Mr. Manchios always had a role for him, and mainly the leading one. The parties were always um, Fabio-centric. And Matista? Was she as popular as her partner? Don't tell her I said this, but I do not think so. Mr. Manchios hired her only because Fabio refused to work without her. Mr. Manchios used to see her as a worker. She was tasked with entertaining the guests, unlike Fabio, who could pick and choose. I don't think I can tell you anything about this. So, the police found a letter from Fabio in your I cannot tell if it was truly in my pocket at all. Perhaps it was placed there later. Well, that is one hypothesis. If it were true, then how did it get there? No clue. But this night has been rather eccentric. Such a detail could have easily eluded me. Indeed. Do you recall reading it? I can't remember that either. But I tend to respect privacy. Reading others' personal notes is not one of my perversities. That's not something I know much about. I've no idea about that. That's not something I know much about. Do you recognize this book? Could Matista have borrowed it from your life? She didn't ask me. How ungrateful. The things described in the book were inspiration for the rituals you performed? Do you really believe that blood, symbols, and incantations can resurrect the dead? They are just eerie tales with a mix of occultism and voodoo. My rituals are a stage to show some of the forbidden pleasures. I've read this letter from Fabio. It had no addressee, but it was found in Mr. Vogel's... Werner? Strange. I didn't think the two of them corresponded. I'm sure there is some explanation. Would you care to read it? Call me superstitious, but I don't care to read a letter from a dead man.
This book, The Power of Love, Blood and Mandrake, what do you hope to achieve? To learn more about the invisible strengths that govern us. Occultism is real. The master who fell that night when Fabio and I escaped, I made him fall. I cast a spell on him and it worked. Or was it a coincidence? The universe is really so lazy. If you say so. I have nothing to add. I have nothing to add. This is the letter the police found in Mr. Vogel's pocket. Fabio wrote it. Do you know anything? I don't. Although I can feel Fabio's energy. It's there, but it refuses to let me analyze it. Do you practice occult rituals? For protection? For fortune? To wash away the ugliness of the world? Sometimes to survive. I have the gift, and I'm learning to use it better. Did you use your gift on Fabio? I only used white magic. Love charms lately. Fabio became so distant. I just wanted him to be with me. But I suppose I'm not as skilled as I thought. Continue our investigation while I look for the papers. The air here is rather refreshing. I'd even recommend that some of my friends visit the place. I recognize the key from the altar room among these. Mr. Manchios says that you begged him to be included in the heritage. Isn't that a little extreme, even for a major dome? He's not only my employer, he's my uncle. And I'm his next of kin. The only one. Mr. Manchios flatly refuses to pay a family member. All I have to do is repay his so-called love. Cleaning up the filth after perverts and decadence. He's imprisoned me. The best I can hope for is a new broom. That's why I wanted to have my part of the inheritance. Is it that bad? 
You have a roof above your head, a salary, and the status of a major domo. For God's sake. I'm forced to dye and stitch my threadbare clothes, and the holes in my shoes are painful. I'm ashamed every time a guest looks at me closely. Why do you think your uncle treats you this way? My mother, my uncle's sister, had me illegitimately. She died, and I was given the surname of one of the maids. But you are entitled to some of the money that belongs to your family. He thinks not. I was not responsible for my mother's death. I work hard, and he pays me nothing. I feed on the leftovers. While he wastes our estate's property on decadent parties, he paid Fabio handsomely and showered him with expensive gifts for their disgusting relationship. I have reason to believe that the intended recipient of the incriminating letter may have been Kurt Manchios. Well, that makes sense. Too bad I can't remember how I came to possess it. Though I did spend quite some time with Mr. Manchios during the party. Unfortunately, even with an answer, that may still not be enough to clear you with the police. But fear not. I will persevere. I hope your attempt to put things straight will make up for... You being on a bender. Touché. Are you done yet? Can I leave? This letter proves nothing. Fabio wrote it to Mr. Manchios. It's time to free Mr. Vogue. Do you really think I'm that naive? I need proof, not words from his friend. Very well. Mr. Pinchetti told me that Mr. Manchios was lavishing Fabio with expensive and eccentric gifts. The letter mentions rich rewards and attempts to buy Fabio with them. It was written to Mr. Manchios. Who else was showering Fabio with luxuries to buy him? It doesn't fit Mr. Vogel's character. Look here. We had a deal. Give me the murderer and then take your friend with you. I won't budge otherwise. Well, fine, but you're just wasting time. I'm nothing to say. I don't know what to say. I'm nothing to say. I'm nothing to say. I don't know what to say. I'm nothing to say. I'm nothing to add. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. I have nothing to add. I have nothing to say. I don't know what to say. I have nothing to say. I have nothing to add. I have nothing to say. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. I have nothing to add. I have nothing to say. I don't know what to say. Could Fabio have written this letter to Kurt Manch- Oh. That could be. I never thought Mr. Manchios could make Fabio that angry, though. What do you mean? Well, Fabio wanted to disassociate from Mr. Manchios. Clients who are in love are both a blessing and a curse. But Fabio was here tonight. Money. 
In our line of work, we can't afford to turn down clients who pay as well as Kurt Manchios. Was Fabio afraid of Mr. Manchios? Not at all. The old toad wouldn't dare to do more than sweet talk and touching. Talk can be forgotten, and touching washed away. There is undeniable evidence that you were the original recipient of this. What are you talking about? Is it addressed to me? Your protege wanted a fresh start, it seems. This is sufficient to charge you. Me? Hurt my star? Are you insane that you would accuse me of such a thing? He did not consider himself as yours. Since you deny everything, let's move on. Do you have any idea as to how the letter could have ended up in Mr. Vogel's pocket? You were the detective. Perhaps he took it from Fabio. Werner was a little high. I've read the letter about your will. A harsh method of ridiculing Santos. I doubt he will use mustache wax when he wears no mustache to begin- Where did you get it? Is the slug here? Tell him. I shouldn't have to provide for him. He's a grown man who shouldn't sit on his uncle's neck. He conceives himself as my only heir. And who is he to you? He's a leech on my aging body. He has only added problems to my life since the death of his mother. I fail to see why you made him your major domo. He needed to know his place, so I taught him. The murder of Fabio did not have a ritual purpose, Mr. Manchios. It was staged by a man who wished to distract the investigation. That might be true. That poor girl, Matista, wouldn't dare to kill the only man who cared for her. So, Santos? Mr. Pinchetti snatched at the chance to solve his problems. Ungrateful little scum. Will he be executed? But what for? He informed the police as to the crime, that was all. He couldn't stage the ritual, but he found the body, I believe. I can't believe it. Why did Werner do it? Mr. Vogel. He had no reason, and he won't be a scapegoat as you plan. You put Fabio's letter in his pocket when he was intoxicated, didn't you? You can't be serious. We can very often deduce someone's life by their shoes or their fingernails. You are a meticulous person, but this murder was fairly traumatic and filthy. After you stabbed Fabio, you were covered in blood. You panicked and neglected to rinse the soap from under your fingernails. The devil is in the details, Mr. Nonsense. I missed it simply because of the busy schedule of the party. Of course, a staged murder was certainly not planned. You're at the twilight of your life. You have no partner, you have no children, you had feelings, however, for one man. That was Fabio. You loved him. That is, you wished to own him with money and gifts. But he was also a free mind, was he not? He turned his back on you. Quite unjust. Love, so cruel and painful. And Fabio, with his words and deeds, made you feel the more wretched. So you killed him. You must surely perceive that my sensitive nature wouldn't allow me to hurt anyone. You staged the murder as a satanic ritual. It was easy for you, since you were the one who wrote the scenarios for the parties. It was your way of avoiding suspicion. A respectable man in his 60s, early 60s, who hosts the cream of Cordona's society, cannot possibly be a murderer. 
But the guests who behave like animals in his mansion, of course, one of them could have killed Fabio. I did oversee a few of the rituals, but I did not stage Fabio's death. The young performer played with your emotions. That was painful to realize. You spent so much time and effort to be with Fabio, but he didn't respond in the way you would have liked. You wanted to be loved. Fabio shattered your dreams. In the smoking lounge, he teased and mocked you. He wanted you to suffer by offering himself to others. The deception was unbearable. You struck him, and then you staged the ritual. You planted the letter in Vogel's pocket and attempted to set up Matista. What poppycock? Sherlock, stop this game now. There is no stop word, Mr. Manchios. Relax and enjoy it. I'll pass the remainder of this case to Constable Oswald. He'll know what to do with you. I have a name for you. Kurt Manchios. Is that so? The Master of the Sabbath? The man himself. Mr. Manchios couldn't stand to lose control over his lover. A deadly revenge that deserves a proper sentence. I have all the evidence to charge him. A degenerate and a murderer. I'll make a name thanks to that for sure. As for my part, not everything was in place. Perhaps some documents were transferred somewhere else, but I couldn't find a trace of them. Then I remembered. The discarded document drawers where we put the lost papers or the badly labelled ones. Including the crime scene report of Violet Holmes's case. Everything I've found is on the desk here. T Your persistence has saved me. Yeah, well, we had a deal after all. Your friend is free then. You can leave. Good luck, Constable. Garden. There's a garden behind our manor. How could I forget? That's where it all happened, where it all went wrong. Sherry, it looks like you've almost found what you wanted. <laughs> oh, you did it, Sherlock! The case is closed and all rewards belong to the winner. Bravo! It is merely the triumph of the truth. Is it? No compromises? No lies? You're happy with your decisions? Whatever the truth, it had to be revealed. The victim deserved it. Well, you seem confident in the value of your actions. I guess since I'm free, you were heard after all. By the way, did you get that precious information about your mother? Oh, not that you must. Yes, I did. Forgive my intrusion in such a personal matter. I simply worry I'm failing to be of much help to you. Actually, you were. For some reason, all the archives on the case had disappeared. This was a rare opportunity to obtain the impossible. Outrageous! Perhaps someone found the truth unpleasant. Society usually rejects those who speak with too much honesty, doesn't it? A comfortable lie is often preferred to an uncomfortable truth. Still, I believe that the latter should prevail, and I cannot remain silent. That's quixotism at its best. Your mere truth cannot defeat institutions, systems, and power. Etiquette, religion, marriage, they're all lies told to preserve connections, love, and sanity. And it's all corruptible. Lies destroy human dignity. How could you make a free decision without any knowledge of the truth? Are we really free to decide anything in this world, Sherlock? I take your point. There are some limits on us all, some compromises we must make. Despite my best efforts, we cannot remain entirely objective. I didn't want to sadden you, Sherlock, only to make you think beyond your boundaries. 
You're a walking contradiction, Sherlock. You refuse to lie to others, but constantly lie to yourself. How long until the train comes off the track? I cannot look away, but perhaps I should take a few steps back. You're an accident waiting to happen, dear. Until then, I shall bid you adieu. Thank mm -hmm. you.